happening you guys I've officially started vlogging my experience of plotting and writing all the way to publishing my next book which surprise surprise is the sequel to my YA fantasy on wings of ash and dust I hope you guys are excited to jump into this first vlog where I share all the feels and the ups and downs of starting a new book from scratch while I focus on fleshing out the very rough outline I've had for book two plus in normal Britney fashion for all my fellow writers out there I definitely share a ton of tips and resources on plotting and even character development as I go. And not only things that really helped me when I was working on book one, but also new things I'm learning and trying out that will hopefully optimize my process this time around. So without any further delay, here's vlog number one. Here we go. Hey friends, I am comfy cozy today because we're starting a new adventure of writing the sequel to my book on wings of ash and dust this is my first time writing a sequel um, my second time writing and completing a book to the point of publication and your girl is feeling both really excited because <laughs> a lot of you are really enjoying book one and leaving amazing reviews and um, just showing off the book online and it's been such a pleasure and just such a dream come true. And then a lot of you are asking for book two or just wondering when the story will continue or when I'll come out with another book in general. And the first book took you know like over three years to get out and I feel like I've learned a lot. You guys have seen on this channel that I have shared as much as humanly possible during the time of creating the first book uh, about the whole process of plotting and drafting and editing and publishing and marketing and all the different stuff and it was my first time really doing all of those steps and I'm the type of person that really likes to make sure when I'm going to do something I'm going to do it right I'm going to do it to the best of my ability I'm going to research all the things but now that I've kind of like gone through it I'm hoping <laughs> It really doesn't take three years to get you guys another book. I really don't think it's going to. I'm working on a plan and kind of like a timeline to do all this stuff. But the point of this intro is that I want to commit to vlogging the experience. I've done vlogs on and off on this channel. Sometimes they take a whole lot longer to edit and to put together than a normal video. So I'm not sure how frequent they'll come out. But progressively, as I go through the steps, again, of plotting or the continuation of plotting, because I've always had like a outline for book two, but I need to go back and flesh that out and finish that out. And then the drafting and the editing, working with beta readers and critique partners and working probably with professional editors again. And then the cover design and whole publishing stage and then the marketing and actually releasing. I'd love to kind of take you guys along for the journey as I continue to do other typical videos that I usually do of like giving you guys tips and answering questions and stuff like that. But yeah, welcome to the first video of writing my sequel. If you are also writing a sequel or if it's just your first time writing a book and you're going through this process, I would love to hear about it in the comments, but particularly if you are writing a sequel, if you have any tips or resources that have been super helpful to you, please let me know. And yeah, I just have like all the feels right now. I've gotten a lot of other things done that I need to get done this month, so I'm ready to get back into the book. And I'm excited, but I am nervous, you guys. I have been procrastinating like nobody's business today. I have all these questions running through my head of just will this book meet reader expectations from the first book will it be easy to write or will my characters fight with me the whole way and change a bunch of stuff as we go and then plus I have our first baby coming in mid-June so I only have a couple of months of kind of normal writer life sorry about the lighting changes by the way this is a vlog so we're just gonna go with it but having a newborn an infant is going to change a bunch of things about my time and potentially how fast this book can get done so this is gonna be just a journey that I'm gonna take you guys along with I'm gonna show you my successes my failures all the feels so I hope you guys are excited and now I will stop rambling so we can get into actually getting the book done no more procrastinating Let's go. As I get into things, I also wanted to share that while I'm working on the outline for book two, 
part of my strategy is actually to convert the outline into a one to two page synopsis to then share with my critique partners to see what they think of the overall story flow, the plot points, um, and if there's anything story structure wise that I could enhance or change or clarify. And this is a process that I learned from another author going to a workshop that I did a whole video about, which I'll link down below if you wanna check that out. But the idea I think is just really genius of getting feedback on the overall story arc of the story, the character arc, the pacing before you even start draft one can potentially be really, really helpful. And I experienced this a little bit with another series I was writing called Sisters of the Shadowwood, which I'd love to get back to at some point as well. And it just made the drafting process so much easier. So my first goal is to kind of look back at my outline, try to translate it into a one to two page synopsis, which hopefully should only take maybe today, maybe just a couple days. And then I can get that to my critique partners, get feedback, make some adjustments, maybe get a little more feedback from them. And hopefully by next week, I can start drafting this thing. And as I do that, also using Scrivener and maybe some of my Notion pages, I've talked about Notion a little bit on this channel before, to do any more character development, world building development, kind of like a series Bible for the second book as a reference point as I write. <laughs> I nearly forgot to grab one of my favorite references while plotting and figuring out a story save the cat you can see I have a bunch of highlights and notes and sticky notes to quickly reference things that I want and the other thing that I'm probably gonna be referencing that I don't wanna to get too distracted about today, but my friend and fellow author, Bethany Atazada, was raving about Abby Emmons' uh, playlist of videos, how to write a novel with three act story structure, because in addition to the Save the Cat beats, Abby kind of renames some of the beats, explains them in a different way, um, talks about some different kinds of story beats. And so maybe I'll do some work on my own outline with what I know so far, and then reward myself with some extra learning on Abby's videos, which I have definitely enjoyed in the past, but haven't seen all of these. So I'm really excited to dig into these later too. <laughs> taking a little break to celebrate the fact that my TikTok that I started just a couple months ago is finally over a thousand followers after I posted this video here with um, one of my readers opening up book one. I was so excited. <laughs> Thanks so much, you guys. If you're already following me on there, if you want to follow me, there's my handle. I'm having a lot of fun on TikTok, mainly talking about my book, some behind the scenes stuff, a little bit of writer things, and also as a reader with my favorite fantasy books. So that's been a lot of fun. And one thing I asked recently on Instagram was if you guys had anything specific you wanted to see in book two. I always love to hear what my readers are really looking for. So their requests might actually make it into the book and I won't show any just in case some of you haven't read book one because their requests definitely include spoilers. But if you're watching this and have read book one and you also have things you'd love to see in book two, considering what questions you'd love answered or what do you want to see happen with certain characters, please let me know because again, it could totally affect the plot this early in the game. Okay, after tons of procrastinating in the morning and actually getting down to working on stuff this afternoon, I have gone completely through the outline that I fleshed out in NaNoWriMo and I fleshed out even more and it's gonna need even more than that. But I think I'm kind of at the point that um, maybe tomorrow I can start working on the synopsis version that I can send to my CPs. So that's a huge win. I'm really excited to see what they think of it so far. And I'm really glad that once I just like kind of pushed through and opened up the document and started reading and working on it, it was like things were clicking and coming back together. And I was re falling in love with the story all over again. My computer's about to die. So I've got to move to a different room where I have the charger, but I think I might reward myself a little bit by watching some of those Abby Emmons videos. So if I learn anything crucial from that, I'll 
definitely let you guys know. For now, I've just been using the Save the Cat Beach Sheet that's found in this book. So if you guys are looking for tips on how to plot, this is definitely what I used for book one. And I have a bunch of plotting videos that I will link down below too if you're in this stage as well, looking for tips on how to do this. I guess I should also mention that I am planning on releasing this book like I did the first book first as a serial and then as a full paperback with all the episodes in it but as I am outlining what I think is kind of coming to the surface is that there will be four longer episodes. I'm thinking maybe closer to like 40,000 words for each of them whereas the episodes for book one were a little shorter and how it will kind of work for the overall story of book two with the four episodes. Episode one will kind of mirror act one. Episode two will be like act two part one with the ending at the midpoint. Episode three will be act two part two with like the bad guys close in kind of section and then episode four will mostly focus on act three. If you're not familiar with what serials are, again I have a bunch of videos I can link down below, but I'll definitely be using similar tips and plotting structures that I shared in some of those videos to find the mini story arcs that will happen within these episodes that will then complement the overall overall story arc when you put all the episodes together. All right, I think I'm going to sign off for today so I can just enjoy learning from some YouTube videos, taking notes, and I'll check back in on the next day that I am working on this book. Hi friends, it is day two of officially working on my sequel and I actually did some work on it this morning which I'll fill you in on but I got something really exciting in the mail so I wanted to unbox it for a second and show you guys. Okay, what this should be are my first package of author copies. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, I had bought my own like directly from Amazon because I have Amazon Prime when the books first came out uh, because I wanted one to like help promote it during release week. But oh my gosh, it's some more and they're so pretty. So this again is book one and I only got a few copies for now, but I kind of want to display them somewhere on my shelf. So I might take a second to do that. But a couple of these copies uh, is going to go to some people like my critique partner who has always given me free copies of her books. And I'm going to keep a few of the other ones on hand in case I do an in-person signing or, or maybe I'll sell them on my website. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. One more thing I wanted to show you guys is that one of my readers did a book review. Um, this is Kathy and she was just so sweet and complimentary about the book. I was smiling ear to ear watching this video. So thank you so much Kathy and if you guys want to check it out there is her YouTube channel there. But yeah so so fun and seeing things like this is totally motivating me to get back to book two so that uh, readers can enjoy the rest of the story. So I've taken a little break to focus on some baby stuff and I think you guys are really gonna like this because we're planning my baby shower. I have a few different theme ideas but I think my favorite one that I think you guys will like is doing a fantasy themed baby shower. How cute is this? Maybe on the invite kind of calling our little boy our little prince. I love all the dragons and different kind of medieval themed stuff and this I think is going to be really fun too if I get to sort of dress up like the queen or the princess who's having their first child and maybe put like a crown on the cake for the little prince. I just think this is super adorable. So I'm going to be meeting with my mom and my aunt and a few of my cousins and my sister-in-law to do some planning later today. And I'm really hoping they like this idea because oh my gosh, it'd be so much fun. Okay, so back to book two. What I did this morning and a little bit of last night is started to go through those videos I was talking to you guys about that Abby Emmons did, sort of going through similar plot points that are in Save the Cat, but also there's a few different ones. Some of them she explains a little bit differently, which I appreciated her approach. And then there's even a few additional plot points that I think really help fill out 
the rest of the bigger plot points that cover a lot of ground. And what I really love that Abby does is focuses on the main character's arc and everything she talks about is how the plot points and the external part of the story affect the internal arc of the character. So I'm really enjoying going through her videos and actually using a page in my Notion to take notes and I love, I've showed you guys in my Notions video before, but in Notion they have these little toggles so that I can hide um, when there's a lot of notes in one place and kind of rearrange things if I want. Oh, I've got a terrible typo there, but all of this is proving really, really helpful to help me really clarify and flesh out Quinn's arc that happens in book two, because even though I have the same main character, I also want to make sure that she's not going through the same exact process. She's probably going to be learning some of the same things because I don't know that any character can fully transform and change permanently after one book, and she's always going to struggle with certain things that affect her personality, things from her past, her past wounds, but I also want to make sure that she's sort of going to another level in her journey, and that it's also so consistent with the type of character she is. Sounds kind of complicated, but this is definitely really helping me. And also, as I've mentioned before, the Enneagram is really helping me too. So real quick, one thing I'll show you that I'm doing in Scrivener is taking the three act story structure beats that Abby Evans is talking about. I have them all listed down here. I'm not going to scroll so that you don't see any spoilers, but with each of the plot points, she asks specific questions. So I'm answering them down below here. And then that's all kind of being wrapped up in context of the book's theme that I've chosen. So I pretty much know what Quinn will learn. And again, we'll see if that changes at all as I write the draft, but I've whited this out so that again, I don't spoil it for you, but I have that here. So as I'm answering the questions and fleshing out the different plot points, even though I have a whole nother outline here I've already created, this is helping me kind of dig deeper into each part of the story. And then I'm answering that through the eyes of what the book's theme is, what Quinn will learn, and also her Enneagram number, which if you don't know what the Enneagram is, I've done a whole video about it and how to use it for your characters that I'll link down below. And I love the Enneagram because it focuses on how everyone has different kinds of personalities that influence what we fear most, what we desire most, our motivations and goals, how we act when we're in stress, the healing message or inner need we have, the truth we need to learn, which kind of ties into this, what we're like when we're in a healthy place and what we're like when we're at our best. And hopefully you can see how a bunch of this stuff are things we also always need to consider when we are creating a believable, fleshed out, compelling character. There is so much more that each Enneagram number has as well. And I do give a free sheet when you watch the video I just mentioned. But yeah, her Enneagram number and what I've picked for the theme of this book is really, really helping me as I go through each of the plot points. And I feel like I'm learning even more about Quinn and about the other characters and their motivations as I do this whole process. And this is why every part of the book process usually takes me a long time because I'm a researcher, I'm an info junkie, I love learning new things, but sometimes learning new things can slow me down in the process because I'm like, I have to learn this, I have to like get all this in and make sure I apply all this stuff to my story before I move to the next stage. That being said, again, I really am finding a lot of value in her videos and I kind of want to finish going through them and applying what I'm learning to my outline before I create that synopsis I talked about earlier to send to my critique partners. So I know I said that I would be writing and sending the synopsis to my critique partners ASAP and I still want to do that but I kind of want to get through these videos first so maybe I'll try to calculate how long it'll take me to get through the videos and make a plan from there of how quickly I can get synopsis to my CPs. Okay, I think I'm going to stop this one here, but I'd love to know in the comments what you guys are thinking about this series so far, if you're excited to see more, and what other kind of things would you like me to feature in future vlogs? Of course, make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss how the synopsis writing really goes and how long it actually takes me to get it to my critique partners. I'll also link all of these videos in a series playlist down below in the description, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Hey!